Hey guys, it's Parker here, back with part 31 and 32 of the Great Ace Tourney 2. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I know last time we kind of, I kind of cut off the, um, the video for a bit because I, I didn't have enough time. I didn't even do if do this the recording for an hour, but I think I have enough time for an hour today. Perhaps what I was trying so hard not to give away with her eyes is something entirely different. Um. Uh... What is Iris really looking at? Uh. This metal chest it contains important documents, doesn't it? Yes, details of all the cases Mr. Shones has worked on over the years. Written up by Iris's father, if I remember correctly. Iris insists that the chest is kept locked at all times. She's never once shown me inside. Well, its contents are invaluable to her, I suppose, and entirely replaceable. But look at it now. The catch is unlocked for once? Ah, so it is. That's hard to ignore. Very. I've never seen that chest unlocked before, and all the time I've been staying here at Baker Street. I don't know. Sh shouldn't it be the metal chest then? Yes, the reason for muteness is concealed inside that metal chest. And an excellent observation for upon closer inspection, there's something different about the chest's appearance. It's kept locked at all times that now the catch is open. Evidently, there's something doing your feels to speak, Iris. But it's a simple enough matter to decide to speak, I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest. Here we go. No, Hurley, don't! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> well, they're both knocked out now in a very... In a very... Uh, <laughs> compromising position. He's dead. Never! <laughs> don't... Oh, Hurley, I told you not to open it. Now they're both knocked out in a weird position. <laughs> uh, so I found your voice now, Iris. In other words, what just happened could reveal the truth here. Yes, the real reason for science until now is... This is somewhat different to the usual dance deduction before Mr. Scholes. I mean, Mr. Scholes is like out of the question here, so... Well, he's left me alone on the ballroom floor, so I'm gonna have to dance this next bar solo. And anyway, I need to get to bond this for my own peace of mind. Now then, Iris isn't usually the sign type, so... You mean you don't actually know the answer yet, despite the annoying point of the finger before? Mrs. Otto, sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh, well, if you say so... I think we better examine Iris more closely and try to rescue the situation then. Um... <gasps> the key! Take that! Yes, the real reason for science until now is that key behind your back. When Mr. Sean stormed the air before. Oh, the key was in her mouth. But he slips something out of your mouth. That's something. It's the key now in your hands. No doubt the key to the chest. You're so... You're so clever, Uno. So now it becomes clear. Thanks to Mr. Shones' graphic demonstration. We can well imagine what happened here. But, but... <laughs> Professor Mikotoba also opened that metal chest. Only to be punched into the air. <laughs> and last sprawled on the city. But wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. <laughs> Just... What about the stylish cut scarf and the cup of tea and a bubble Irish? Just probably put it all there and try to make it natural. Like, oh, he just knocked out. Why would we be wearing Kazuma Sama's mask? Because Irish just shoved it on his face. Well, for those curious details, I can think of only one explanation. Clearly, an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. No. Is that right, Iris? 
Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. When Professor Mikoto opened the chest, completely unaware of what had weighed him inside, the mass was falling into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face and fell back down. And the Tika's journey through the air ended when it caught an unconscious professor's finger. You, you mean to say that Stash's scarf? It's actually just a tablecloth. This is the great detective's office after all, a place of miraculous seductions. Okay, <laughs> would you expect anything else, Les? Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as he said. <laughs> really? Wow. Brilliant, Runo. That's concludes. You escaped Naruhodo's great deduction of this punchy puzzle. Literally, punchy. So then, why, did why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for us all? And, um... <laughs> Oh, he's already back! Oh my god. An admirable performance, this is Naruhodo. But in the final act of the show there, you'd rather miss everything of importance. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, if you would cast your mind back to my earlier deduction. Okay, just skip over this. She is? From the look of her face? Mrs. Sholmes is right. Whatever that great secret is, the cat is not bag it. It really is a shame about Mr. Schultz's cup. It must have been smashed when Professor Megatoba opened the chest. Oh dear, so many things seem to have been broken here. But now that the deduction is taking a different direction. Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, the great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to work here one final time then. Surely this time at last, knapsack is going to be the answer. I'm really not sure why you're so intent on showing Iris' bag to be complicit in these events. Because it's a sizable bag, big enough to carry things around, Mr. Harder. That's what bags are for. So the knapsack might never see the limelight. You mean? I mean, it's a really cute bag. I really wouldn't like to say. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh... Wait, what's over here, Iris? <laughs> Ah, look, there, there seems to be more papers there. Is Iris trying to hide them underneath the tray? The insignia of Ms. Naruhodo is an, an, an official uh, Beskan Yard document. What? But why would Iris have- We must ask her, an official Scotland Yard document. Alright, gotta present this. You are attending this song with that case file. Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective. Oh no. We visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today. And Dr. Gori informed us that the autopsy reported Clint Van Zeeks had gone missing. Clint Van Zeeks, whom hmm, yes, I do seem to recall. That's some years ago I asked you to report a question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? And Iris took the report? Yeah. No wonder she was acting kind of suspicious over there. I. I. You mean it was you, Iris? So those papers you have there are. I'm sorry. Forgive me! Well, we just made Iris cry <laughs> to hide the case file. Solved. <laughs> Shows us what Iris had, but deduction complete. Elementary. <laughs> and truth. I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby trap chest. But it caught me completely off guard. I was very nearly delayed consulting Detective Herlock Sholmes. Ugh, I'm sorry, Hurley. So you mean this autopsy part really is? Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in that in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I've been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it. Is it your dad's? I knew it was daddy's. The the writing? Your father's writing? What do you really mean? I 
I don't know, it's something that's hard for it to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. This is Sean's, what is it? I'm wondering if I could, like, raise the, the music. Oh, it's just on? Well... Okay, I guess you can't. Yeah. Oh well. I feel I feel it's still the poor unconscious gentleman. All the cities is so much forgotten. Ah, but father! Perhaps you should whoops. Find our guests so we're more peaceful than the rest. This is Naruto, yes? Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? You must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, yes, of course. I'll help you carrying him up. So will I. No, no, I can match it on. Thank you. I have tea to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris' brew to stew. Off they go. Because there's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging upstairs like a trunk. Oh my gosh, Sholmes. I wonder, maybe perhaps that was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Sholmes is making himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk more freely. We must use this opportunity to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. Alright. Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That daddy used to be Harley's partner. Yes, and that knows about all the cases he saw together are kept inside a metal chest. But I have a feeling your dad wasn't Sherlock's, I mean, Herlock's partner, though. That's what Harley told me, see? He said that daddy's somewhere far away now, so he can't meet. That's one way of describing it. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what Daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. Wow, this airplane is really loud. <laughs> I read that Daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took my degree too. Like, yeah, as you do as a perhaps, perhaps ten-year-old girl. But well, that's only natural, I suppose. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. You're a freaking genius. But there's one thing that I could never find out. Daddy's name. Ah, his name wasn't anywhere in any of the notes that you made about his work with Hurley. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? When you saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out, is that right? Yes. So it's a handwriting report that caught her eye. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know the handwriting, I thought to myself. Because the same as the writing you see on your father's case notes? Exactly. I was desperate to compare the two properly. I need to see I need to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that the first and last time you'd be allowed even to look at it here. So he decided to steal it. When I compared the autopsy report to the case notes I had here, there was no doubt. The handle was exactly the same, it was daddy's. And the signature of the coroner at the bottom of the autopsy report read Dr. John H. Wilson. So that's how I finally found out. I learned daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then, I called myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories all about daddy's exciting times to Hurley. I decided there and then that I write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, Iris, I had no idea the stories had quite such a deep personal significance to you. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now. And why she was prepared to break the get her hands on it. I must apologize, Iris. This is really all my fault. Hurley? I made a promise, you see, that until the time was right, i keep the details about your father a secret. I know, I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to Dr. Gory and apologize, I promise. Yes, we'll go together, I think. Then, let me look after it for you until we get there. Alright, autopsy report. I kind of want to read it. Okay. Time of death, 31st May, between 9pm and midnight. 
deaths from a single stab wound to the heart, other superficial external wounds, and indicative of a rule duel. Additional notes. Recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring fingers of the right hand, but no documented corresponding ink was found. Red ink, huh? Vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Credit to Inspector Gresson for petitioning so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. What was in the victim's stomach, though? A single stab went to the heart, heart, and there was something in his stomach, and there was ink, and there was red ink stains on his right hand, and the ring finger and the little finger. Okay, I get the gist of it. I was going to water my herbs. I think. I'll see y'all later. Hey, bye, Iris. <laughs> Poor Iris. She was feeling awful. I know Mr. Shones is here for her, but still. Ah! What? H how? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Shones? Mr. Shones? Oh dear me. So, you've noticed, I see. But that, that would mean. What on earth is the matter, Mr. Sully? Turn as white as a sheet. And Clint Van Zeeks didn't die from a dog bite in the throat. He freaking died from a stab wound. Is this a tossy from Mr. Nohardo, the one for 10 years ago? The writing. Is it Dr. Wilson's at all? Huh? What do you mean? How could you possibly know that? Because I know this writing very well. Is it your dad's? This writing. It's my father's. What? Professor Mercatobas? Indeed, it's true. And now I know. No, my dear fellows. N no, I don't know anything. What on earth is all this, all, all this mean, Mr. Scholz? I can't read today. Because the idea is slowly forming a mind. It's just too extraordinary to believe. You mean, Susano's dad is Scholz's partner? I, I think that's what I'm thinking. Please, you have to explain. So, does the toxic report is actually penned by Professor McToba then? But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely? Not possible, my dear fellow. Pray, take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways, it actually makes a great deal of sense. It, it does? Ten years ago is when my father returned to Japan to his sunny study tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where is Dr. Mugatoba engaged? Uh, of course, the prison. Uh, Dr. Wilson's laboratory learning about forensic science and he actually worked um, with the prison warden, too. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the dissection work, making detailed notes, which would be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents, put his signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Wilson's report would be a signature at the end. I see. So Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? I'm just thinking about that witness from the last case in the first game. I'm sorry, sir, but I think you got the wrong end of the stick. I do not have stick. I have mouse. <laughs> that, 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 I, I, oh yeah, he wasn't a witness. He was a juror. I think he was one of my favorite jurors in that game. Like, I, he was the Russian dude and he had a mouse. I don't know. He was pretty pretty. He was pretty funny. I do not have stick. I have mouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we really have no way of knowing, knowing what's fact and what's fiction. Well, it's troubling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So what about this supposed partner of yours? Is he really, did he really exist or not? Ah, uh, you come straight to the point, I see. And uh, please come straight to the answer. I believe I was explaining one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade, the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this part of yours truly make a record of all our cases? Are our notes really stored inside the metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam, absolutely. So, where's your partner now? Upstairs? We rarely meet. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. 
but it this autopsy part and the records of all your old cases penned by same hand I can't read today, and the autopsy part is written, though not signed by your famous partner, there would be only one logical conclusion. It's Mikotoba. Pray, impress me. Your partner would have to be Yuji Mikotoba. In other words, Mrs. Alice Water. Upon my word, Mr. Naruhodo, is that why you took us in? Like, took um, Ryunosuke and Susato in? You're coming on wonderfully. You have hit upon the method as at last. You finally grasp the art of deduction. You, you mean to say, well, yeah, I guess they learned a lot ever since the first case in um, the Great Ace Attorney, huh? Allow me to introduce you. Oh, he's already awake. To my great friend and partner, Megatoba. But Professor Megatoba. Th does this mean that you're the real Dr. Wilson? No, 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 my dear. I'm still my old self, Yuji Mikotoba, your father. Oh, uh, of course. This is obviously too much for Sasa to take in. I must say, though, how my old friend is saying worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, pray remind me. When was it again, Mikotoba? 16 years ago, Sholmes. Ah, yes, quite. 16 years ago. I just arrived from Japan with Seishiro and Genshin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital, some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. But rents were devilishly high in the particular area. Probably because it's next to, like, a port. That's right, so I decided I needed someone to share lodgings and expense. I was fortunate enough to be introduced to Shon to find someone in a similar situation. I was a color fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working in the hostel's chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for a little game. And the situation for a cohabitation led us to pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe, it was a mere six years. We had a great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotob's stay in Britain, that most infamous case presented itself. The case with which you become rather familiar yourselves, the Professor Killings. After the trial, Seishiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising given the circumstances. So there you have it. And as you know, all the details occurred by my trusty chronicler remain in that metal chest. It's just amazing, Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Scholz's famous partner. Father. G goodness, my dear, what a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you're the great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery I really must ask you to explain now. And then th that is? You know very well what it is. The unresolved matter, Iris' father. Ah, of course, I almost forgot about that. I should have seen this coming, I suppose. Iris told us that all the notes about the great detective's adventures that are in the metal chest were written by your father. Is that correct, Mr. Sholmes? That is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mrs. Sholmes' partner, father, and you wrote all these case notes, then Iris' father must be you. Ah. Um. Pawn my word, Mrs. Otto. You are coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. Wait, what? You finally grasped the art of deduction? What? What you've always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago, and you let me in grandmother's care while so you embarked on your study tour. But wait, so Iris is. What? Is related to Mikotoba? And I've always accepted that, but. All this about Iris. Oh, there it is. Susato stands ice cold stare. No, no, hold on a minute. It's very calm. I mean, is this really not what you think? The pressing I can explain exactly what it is. There it is. Now the eyes go from ice cold to red hot just before she. No, really. You you got the wrong in the stick. Show him say something, man. <laughs> That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. Mr. Jones, when did you get all dressed up? Was I don't like to interrupt this exciting inspiration of the past. Mikotoba and I have urgent matter that requires a shir short excursion. But it's very late, Mr. Sholmes. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? I'm part of my- And now I must pursue our natural enemies. 
So, get your coat, Mikotoba, the game is afoot. But, but, shh, oh, I really must give Suzato a full explanation, I think. Later, my dear fellow, later, I carriage your waits downstairs already. Oh my god, the music! Wow, that music was so good. Oh, whoops, I should do autoplay. It would only be later that I'd come to realize how amidst the chaos I'd unleashed were all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth and that all the turmoil was necessary to give me the resolve to see everything through. And wow, that's such a banger theme. 